Hey, this is Vu, and today I'm going to take a look at winning on CT side of Overpass, which is great because CT side is really the fun side of the map. There's about a bazillion things you can do to catch your opponents off guard and get free entries, and unfortunately on the T side, it's a lot harder because your opponents have the same bazillion things they can do. Now, the first thing you want to be looking at is make sure you're playing this A side as a duo. I often see people kind of play it as two solo players, and that's standard for most other situations. However, a site overpass really is a spot where you'd want three players to hold it, but you want three players B because it's also a very hard site to hold. I've heard overpass described as a map that's meant for 6v6, and that makes a lot of sense. So on this A side, you really want to be playing as a roaming duo and sometimes just giving up areas that might be somewhat important. For example, doubling up long A here with your rifler playing passive looking, you know, anti-flash and your opera up here can be extremely effective. And if they don't go long, you can have the rifler eventually push up and try to flank, especially if you're pugging, that's gonna be extremely effective as almost nobody will be watching the flank. But even if you're playing in a coordinated game with a team, this can still be effective and it forces your opponents to always have someone on every round watching that long flank for long portions of time. And it makes it easier for you to hold other parts when they can't send all five players there. Other setups you can be using are something like the Fnatic setup where you have the opera posted on this angle here eventually falling back to this angle here and the rifler posted on the cross this is a very well-known setup very effective as well now the one thing you may be thinking is vu what about connector and connector is such a good spot if you're a rifler especially if you're a solo rifler you really are going to want to go here you know intuitively it makes sense you have very heavy impact on a because it's hard to take a without connector control you also have a quick rotate over to the b site as well so you really do impact both bomb sites in a major way. The problem is you have no real support. This is one of the spots that kind of go outside of this roaming duo norm that you want on A. However, you do occasionally want to be running this because connector is so pivotal and you want to make it very hard for them to control connector. You want to make sure they waste as much utility as possible. So the two options are you can run this when you have three A, so you have one connector and two A, and your connector player essentially being an A player, or you can run this in the high risk variation where you just kind of go in connector solo and you try and get something done. Both have some merit. You can try and run both occasionally, but it's hard to coordinate with your team. So usually you're going to end up having your opera just hold these angles for a little while, try and make sure nothing crazy can happen to begin with, and then abandoning you eventually, maybe just helping with, you know, a late flash above connector for you to peek out top connector and kill some people out here at some point. But there's not too much else you can really do. Sometimes on overpass, you do actually have to take some solo engagement, some 1v1 duels, and that's okay because the 1v1 duels you're going to be taking are typically very CT favored. Similarly, you can have a setup on long A where a rifler is in this corner here. I call this cafe setup. You have the rifler there and an opper here. Now, although the opper might have to back up or you could get smoked off, this engagement here is still typically very advantageous, and that means you should typically be winning it a high percentage of the time. Oftentimes the T's can't afford to send multiple players over to clear you out of this angle. So they might just lazy clear it with one player or they might just leave this area entirely and you get a ton of info by going for the flank. Now the utility you should know on A, the main one you wanna know is a molly towards T stairs. And the way to do that is to run up here and you're gonna look at the bottom of this, right about here. And you're gonna jump throw as you pass the bench on the right here. Here. So as I run up, I'm going to be looking right about there, jump throw as I pass that bench. The main thing is about throwing it in the right position, more so than the aim. You can be kind of pretty lenient along that bottom line, but you want to be throwing it right about here as a jump throw on 64 tick, and that's going to molly off stairs. There's also a molly for playground, but it's not quite as important as that molly as well as a smoke towards stairs are the main utility you wanna be throwing on a lot of rounds. Now, you probably don't wanna be throwing them both on the same round as that smoke is useful, but kind of gets a different job done. With that molly, what's gonna happen is they're gonna molly it off 
you're or you're gonna molly it off they're gonna have to smoke it off and then you can have something like an op peak party catch players trying to run out the side of the smoke and if they don't run out the side of the smoke they're gonna have to delay a little while worried about controlling mid and if they instead of trying to control mid and wait out that smoke they try and come through playground you definitely can have this smoke down to give you a little bit of cover so that you can post on an angle like this early this is definitely something you can do and you can absolutely abuse teams that try and come through playground too often which will very often be your pug opponents so that that smoke does have some use and you can throw it low step and try and see over it sometimes but i wouldn't always be thinking about combining those two as the molly will often give you cover to do something like pushing up into fountain here or pushing up close and the smoke kind of cuts you off from your teammate that might be trying to support you at the same time as b players there's one specific smoke you should definitely know i usually aim a little bit out from this line here up to about that line there so if you aim it like this and you throw a jump throw on 64 tick this should land as a pretty consistent monster smoke that lands just at the end there of monster and allows your team to clear inside of monster pretty effectively with this smoke if your best spawn goes and throws a nade and then peeks out on this he's going to trap them in that smoke by that nade hitting them they're going to be slowed and he can easily spam them down especially if you combine that with a flash like this that's going to blind players coming out of monster as well this can be a pretty foolproof way of shutting down monster unfortunately you do need some pretty good team coordination with that one as it requires at least two players worth of play i mean with this nade you can also try and do something like this if you want but you know that's going to delay you just long enough that at least one player is going to be through that smoke and causes some problems typically what you would do is you can yourself throw that smoke to support your players on B. You show up a little bit late and your monster player can throw a molly and still get plenty of things done. Really a B rush if you have a smoke down at the end of monster is gonna be very tough to work with since they're gonna have to smoke off their own molly and then all of monster pipe is gonna be smoked. Incredibly tough to actually orient yourself and get a kill on someone spamming you down in that type of situation. Following that B is pretty tough to hold specifically because it's so open it's so easy for your opponents to flash you from all sorts of different locations and that means usually b is held by rotating between some different duo setups with a third player there for support so your third player is typically going to be the rotator oftentimes he'll be playing an angle back here on ct side or he'll be playing somewhere like graffiti or heaven because he wants to be able to quick rotate to a and then you have the two b players playing one of a few different setups one of the main ones you're going to see oftentimes you'll have one player posted up here and another player playing close on wood wall and the reason this is an effective setup is because this player can make contact this side and quickly this guy can pivot to support or this guy can make contact short side and this guy can look back to support and the player pillar can turn back and easily watch monster. So you've got a bait and switch between the two of you in both directions. Now along different veins, you can play setups that are more individual focused. A spot like this near the back of B is extremely effective at dealing with players trying to go for individualistic plays, which is what you're often gonna see in pugs. They're gonna try and walk pick into B and you don't really have to aim duel if you've got this much of an off angle. If you look at this, he would have to be aiming here, which is a very odd spot to be pre-aiming, and especially if you've got an AUG, it's almost an unlosable duel. A spot like that works brilliantly on its own. Another spot that works great individually is a spot on sewer pipes over here as well. If you get up onto this specific pipe, you're crouched down, and you can see people's feet as they try and come through. The problem with this is similar to the problem with the previous angle, which is if your opponents use flashes very effectively, these spots do essentially get nullified and both of them leave you somewhat in no man's land as you drop down this one will put you into pit however you're far from any actual obstacles to obscure your opponent's vision and you have a troubling time actually taking them down when they make their way in so those are two pretty strong angles that you can play on your own but they do have their flaws if you're playing against very strong opponents whoa 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 wait before you move on come on Vu, you're forgetting things 
The thing about B is there's just about a million places you can play. It's a bit less than a bazillion, but there's definitely about a million. It's a matter of question of how well they synergize. One of the reasons you see people play barrels very often and there's nothing wrong with it is that it, it's really easy to play off of. There's so many angles on B, they almost all have some synergy with barrels. And so you often see this as a default place to play when you're pugging. Nothing wrong with that at all. You just have to be aware of how you're using your smoke. Smokes are something that are often really overlooked when it comes to pugs, but you'll often see professional play or just any coordinated level of play will be using their smokes in very meaningful ways. You don't just want to always use all three of your smokes towards monster. Using that open back monster smoke is fantastic. Sometimes re-smoking it can be very strong as well. However, you want to be thinking that if you're going to play barrels, you typically want to have a smoke left over. The reason for that is because barrels is so common, it's now mollied most of the round. You want to have your smoke either to smoke yourself off. One of the ways you can use your smoke is something like this when your opponents are pushing out B. What that's going to do is it's going to block off one of the entry paths for your opponents that they want to take and force them through the other side. You can throw a smoke on either side really. Smokes on this side are fairly effective as well, forcing them through the other direction, but this is the more common one and easier to throw if you're playing barrels. You can throw a similar smoke from pit here by throwing it like like this, which is going to kind of fake that you're playing barrels and it'll prevent people from pushing out on you very comfortably and it allows you to play more angles like this or you can back up and play angles like this, catching your opponents as they're pushing into the site. The less angles you have to worry about, of course, the better. Overall, when it comes to B on overpass, it's really about trying to catch them from as many different angles that they can't expect as possible and capitalizing when they come in through these very dangerous positions. If you come up through short you have to walk through this angle here which is a pretty big problem and if you come out through monster you have to come through the barrel here which is a pretty tight choke point and again you eventually have to make your way onto the bomb site up here which is very rough to deal with any level of delay you can do to allow rotates that prevent them from getting past those angles safely is going to be very effective okay now back to your regularly scheduled recorded yesterday content now, one of the things you want to be making sure you're doing against strong or weak opponents is utilizing short control. Short is one of the most advantageous angles you can hold on this map because of how well it cuts off rotations. You can start many a round out on short, at least with one player, especially if you open with a molly like this, where I just aim at that second story there, it's going to go for a molly. You can throw a quick flash like this to make your way out with that molly and if someone smokes it off that'll blind them and you take full control of short which you can hold from an angle like this or you can hold from a more passive angle back here if you want trying to deal with any pushes one of the things you really want to be doing on this map though is mid-round re-aggressions into short you can mid-round spot out short maybe doing a jump like that maybe jumping over here looking for information and then you can do certain re-aggressions to try and take control flashes that re land right around here are very effective for this sort of play. It's going to blind most of the players in short and because there's such a small gap between short and where you are safe at where you know this corner here you can get to relatively safely flash over and you can instantly clear out players that are in vulnerable positions your opponents on short really have to be playing angles like this they have to be going back in the short pipe if they want to have any safety after actually taking short b and when you're playing less coordinated opponents you're going to find players don't typically do that they're going to sit in the middle of the open and short very often and that means you can punish them with these mid-round aggressions now, if you're playing more coordinated players, you'd want to be doing something like this, where you're throwing a molly down towards this angle, and then you're trying to deal with it from there. In fact, you can throw a molly down towards this angle like this that will both molly out the bottom and the top. You can have someone throw a molly and throw a flash like this as well, which does, you know, kind of run right in front of your opponents. However, it can be somewhat effective anyways and swing out right off of it, catching people that are getting pushed out of this corner. That's one of the more effective ways to take back short control against highly coordinated opponents. But there are many different things you can do. For example, op picking into this angle here at the beginning of the round, trying to get an end 
entry, or just walking back into short with a couple of players late round as well. That one is more dangerous, of course, however, it is always viable because short is such a tough spot to hold. There are so few angles you can really be holding it from that are fully safe from a pop flash peak, and it's such a vital area to be controlling. So if your opponents take short B and then they start heavily pressuring A, retaking short can be a very viable play for you to make, though extremely dangerous. It's definitely one of those plays you want to be making in situations where your team is at some sort of a disadvantage or you have a bit of a read on your opponents as to how they're playing and you can go for this sort of situation. Now, while I wax lyrical about retaking short B and putting pressure there, that is something that works very well against teams that allow it to happen, which is often pretty much all pug teams, but it is something that can be somewhat dealt with. When you're looking at winning on overpass, a lot of the time what you're really looking at is more aggressive plays from A side players and more reactive plays from B side players. Retaking short B would typically be more of a reactionary play based on what's going on around the map towards the A side or things you've seen in previous rounds. On A side, what you want to be doing is you want to be taking one of the previously mentioned a bazillion angles and trying to get an aggressive pick especially off of your op early round, and then eventually falling back towards the site in the mid and late round, potentially leaving a rifler somewhere here like close bathrooms or close long A, trying to go for a later round reaggression. The only problem with A is if you do fall off of all of those semi-aggressive angles, if you give up bathrooms and give up long, it is hard to bridge the gap between site and bathrooms to go for any sorts of reaggressions, which means you're kind of trapped back on site in a lot of situations and that can be somewhat tough to hold if you have no coordination. It really does oftentimes come down to actually hitting your shots and oftentimes you can't really rely on matchmaking players to quite that level. Unfortunately, that's the reality of the situation. Occasionally, you do just have to hit your bullets and get some free kills. The one tip I would give from playing back on site is if you want to spam people bathrooms, that's about a headshot level right around this angle. You know, you can go for a spam straight through here, right around here, should be catching a lot of people and you can get a pretty decent number of kills if you know that spam. Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope this helped. If you want to see more, subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com slash VCSGO.